Hey guys, this is Jackson, and I'm going to talk to you today about um, sort of the un untapped potential of um, AR, VR, MR, XR, whatever you want to call it, virtual reality, augmented reality, mixed reality, um, I don't know what the X is, just <laughs> altered reality, I suppose. Um, maybe it stands for something special, I don't know. Um... I think up until this point, today, games, video games, have been in a very small pocket of society, like sort of in their infancy. It's like games, you access the game world through a console or, you know, your computer. It's like it's inside a machine. It's on a screen. Um, you're limited to controllers with your hands for the most part apart from a few exceptions like um like the nintendo wii where you would swing the thing um and you know there's some other things with like motion controls and things like that but for the most part it's all very um sedentary um it's very two-dimensional looking at a screen like i'm doing right now um and sort of intellectual and mental as well. It's like, because of those limitations, it's like, you can sort of imagine yourself in the place, but like, you're not really in, you're not really in a game. I think VR at the moment sort of comes the closest where it's like, you can look around in an actual game world. And I think that is the first sort of, um, like peek into what video games could potentially be, I think. I think our whole experience of video games so far has sort of been through a window. It's been through a window in the form of a two-dimensional screen where you can sort of peer into a world, but it still exists as separate from you. Um, unless it's a very immersive game and that you sort of forget that you're on a couch and whatever, and you know, the lights are off and you've got good sound and things like that. You can sort of more feel like you're in it. Um, sort of like when you watch a movie. Um, but I think that's just the beginning. <laughs> And I think this is this is what excites me probably more than anything when it comes to game development is the thought that potentially as the technology develops and as we get better at design and things like that, that the experiences that you get inside of a video game can hit you with the same um, convincing, immersive experience and impact as like physical existence it's like the distinction between what is in a game and the distinction between what is called like quote-unquote reality can be dissolved and you can experience a video game and feel like you live a video game the way that you live your life i think i think without knowing it i think that's what people want and what they're trying to get when they play a video game is what they're trying to do and what we all what what I try to do when I play a video game is I play it because it has an experience that I fucking wished was real. <laughs> right? It's like why else why else would you play a game? It's like you play it because it's 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 better than than life. Life outside the game. It's like you play a game because um it sort of gives you a or you can you can put yourself in an experience that you can't get anywhere else. It's like a new way, it's a different way of existing. It's, um, you know, a, a world that is inspiring. It's a, you're playing a role that is engaging and, you know, difficult and challenging, but meaningful. Um, and to be honest, all the principles of game design, if you get down to like what the fundamental motivation for even studying game design is, is it's basically just, um, it, it's sort of like an existential study of like humanity. Um, and the most popular games are the ones that sort of tap that vein of like things that are the most compelling and meaningful and engaging for a human being. Um, and I don't know what that says about us, given that like, you know, a lot, a lot of the most popular games are like fucking Call of Duty and like shooting people in war simulators and like <laughs> just murder, basically murder and like for guys anyway, for guys. It's not, it's not necessarily the same for, for, for women, but for, for guys, isn't it? It's just like, um, you want to be the fucking, the sickest dude who kills everybody else. <laughs> it's funny. It's very, very, um, 
it's very revealing about the psyche of humanity. It's just you just look at the games that you play and the way people behave in games, right? The way people behave in video games that what that tells you it tells you their character, doesn't it? It's like who they are when they can do anything. Um. Anyway, so that's that's sort of that sort of game design. It's like you know you're creating you're creating worlds and systems and simulations and realities that get what quote unquote physical reality gets wrong it's like we've and this is why games are so popular i think um and you know got really popular over like lockdown and things is because our like <laughs> life as a modern human being sort of sucks um for a lot of people and a lot of people aren't happy a lot of people are depressed a lot of people don't like their work a lot of people um you know feel lonely and isolated they don't live lives that they necessarily want to live um because you know, it can just be too hard. It can, you know, they for many reasons. There's many reasons why people aren't happy, um, and th this became exceptionally the case during the the lockdown periods because it was like you couldn't go anywhere, and so you you stuck at home. And then you've got this avenue through video games where you can you can live the life that you feel like you were born to live. You know, that's that's what games get right. They get right the best the best in us, and where we're we're most engaged in the things that we wanna we want to experience not necessarily the best in us because of the reasons that I explained before, but you know, at least, at least they're engaging. They, they, their whole industry is about optimizing experience so that people want to play. People want to have a good time. Um, you know, you want to engage in scenarios and experience worlds where they're, you know, they make an impact on you. They're inspiring. Um, you have a new way of being in the world and of relating in the world and a new way of experiencing life. And, you know, video games, they give you the good ones. They give you an intimation of what the best in humanity is. It's like, you know, hero stories and adventuring to strange new worlds and, you know, coming across just amazing things and being challenged, meaningfully challenged. Um, all this goes into game design. But basically what I'm getting at and the, the reason why um, I started off talking about AR and VR and MR and things like that is because that experience has been... Um, isolated inside a screen it's been we've been one degree removed from it it's like it's been in the tv and the human being has been interfacing with it from on the couch or whatever um but the interesting thing about vr is like it is a step where suddenly um you're not just looking at a screen but you're actually looking around a world and your body is engaged you're doing things um you're still doing things with your hands like controlling and things but um your hand commands are a little bit different to using a controller just with sticks and then just the fact that you have the capacity to look around, I think, is like a huge step that's made in VR. Um, but I don't think it's going to stop there, and that's sort of the point of this video. Um, is I just I want to I want to point to the fact that what this development in VR, AR, mixed reality, and etc., what this development has the potential to lead to is sort of like a colliding of like the physical world and the digital world. It's like at the moment, they're, they're two separate things. And it's like you're either gaming or you're living your life. But um, what I think would be an ideal case is it's like if you take all the game principles and the things that make video games amazing and then you take physical reality, it's like where we, you know, most most people are miserable and depressed and like <laughs> sort of don't want to engage because of whatever reasons, um, which is why they turn to games. It's like if you can take those principles from video games and take the worlds that we experience through video games and then merge them with reality. It's like reality becomes better for that. It's like people are drawn to games for a reason. It's because they offer something which our world and society doesn't. And so I think the way in which those two can come together, I think um, has a lot of potential for a really exciting future and where I think there's um, new ways of like, I think new sports that could be born, new, um, you know, ways of, existing that can be explored um a lot of people do things in video games that you know are simulations of things in the world it's like simulation games are a huge thing to explore in video games that people are fascinated with in games because they don't get the chance to do that in the world you know um and there are plenty of games that you know are about fucking business and like money and um you know doing hard fucking problem solving and like all of these really difficult and challenging things like games aren't easy man like they're they're very challenging and people people the good ones people don't like dedicate enormous amounts of time to them um and get really 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 good at them and i think 
you know, as architects of video games versus architects of reality, I think the architects of society in our world could learn a lot from the architects of game designers in terms of, like, making world and a society <laughs> um, in meaningfully engaged in... Meaningfully um, engaging. <laughs> it's sort of turned into an anti-society rant, hasn't it? Um... Basically, I think, I think, um, I think the two worlds are going to collide. I think people, people are going to check out more and more, as in opt out more and more of bullshit going on in the real world to the point where it dies and decays and people are going to opt in to what's happening inside of games because games are more fair they're more fair they're more meaningful and more engaging and they're more fun all around just better and i think games are gonna eventually get better and better in terms of technology they're going to become more and more real and then through things like ar and vr and whatever all the augmented reality technologies i think they're going to merge back with reality <laughs> and then ideally best case what we get is a new world where um the stuff that we've been exploring in games, the sort of psychological realities that we've been exploring in games and the things that we enjoy to engage in, I think are going to find their way back into our lives. So for example, like if you just, if you just gamify learning, um, or say gamify exercise, like imagine, imagine how much fun you would have, <laughs> like, um, say if you set up like an augmented reality arena in like a, a ninja warrior course or like in a like a paintball forest or something imagine how fit you would get um running around a fucking forest playing like call of duty like paintball or something but like you know with the with the ui and the experience and the the visual effects and things that you can do in like call of duty um I think, I think there's potential for that. I think there is potential to take those things that we love about video games and then to live them in an embodied experience rather than isolated in a, in a screen um, and then, you know, end up healthier and even more engaged, I think, because of it. I think that's a real potential. And so that's an example for exercise. I think, I think there'll be a whole new generation of gamers who get um, jacked as fuck. And cardio through the roof just because all they do is game. They just game 24-7. They just fucking run around and run around playing fucking Call of Duty in augmented reality. And so the stereotype of like, you know, a fucking gamer being like weak and like frail sitting at a um, computer screen like a nerd all day will just go out the window and instead gamers will just be jacked as fuck and like really strong and really fit because they're meaningfully engaged in... Um, a game which is more embodied than um, the sort of disembodied version that we've got in computers right now. Um, I think that'd be really fun. Maybe maybe this is just my bias because I'm a sort of um, like physically embodied sort of person. Like I, I, I like doing shit with my body. I like doing fucking sports and things. Um, so maybe that's just my bias and people aren't interested in that. But person, like I, I think that... Um, the embodied acting out of a video game is so much better than just staring at a screen. And people people go to great lengths. I saw this video the other day about um, these dudes who had taken, like, a war simulator game and then hooked it up to, like, fucking physical, like, rocket launches and shit that they were, like, playing with in their living room where they were loading up, like, soft drink bottles into fucking um, canister things and then flicking a switch and then that would then interface with the game and then the rocket would be launched in the game. It's like, I feel like there is so much missing um, in terms of tactile experience that would add so much more depth and immersion to video games because why do, why do games need to be different from reality? I suppose that's a good question to ask. It's like, why do we, why do we create the compartmentalization or the division between what is game and what is reality? I think what we engage in in games um, should be what we engage in in reality in some ways. Not, not in every way, <laughs> but we should look at the things that we like about the games and then ask why we aren't doing those all the time, right? Like, that just seems like a no-brainer. 
Um, it's like people get so insanely, ridiculously good at games um, because they're so meaningful and they get really, really intelligent with them. And then, um, you know, they don't, they don't get rewarded for that in real life necessarily. It's like more fair for them to put the time into a video game than into real life. So anyway, gamifying reality. This doesn't just apply to exercise, it applies for um, the other example I put was business in as well. Like you, by by gamifying like you you can teach you can teach anything through a video game. You can people learn fucking like surgery and shit from virtual reality. It's like um there's so much to be learned from simulation, I think. So anyway, that's that's where I think the the future of all this is going. I think um I think there is huge potential for virtual reality to merge with reality and augmented reality to to be huge and i think the technology is not there yet but there is some really cool shit which maybe i'll link in the comments here um but there's just there just doesn't seem to be like much um like drive behind developing it maybe there is that i'm just not aware of um i suppose i have seen quite a lot of stuff come out recently with um meta and apple um and some other shit going on so I suppose I suppose the bottleneck is just like technologically you can't really you can't really plug into a, a metaverse that well just yet. But I suppose that's coming, and I guess it's just something to be aware of. But um, yeah, I think um, I've written here athletic mixed reality because I <laughs> I feel like that's um that's a huge untapped thing that I see immense potential in, and I think it'd be really fun. So anyway, I've rambled for long enough, so that's it. What do you What do you think? What do you think? Let me know. See ya.